Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Then we will explain few more parameters. One is the flexibility parameter B factor. What is B factor? Thermal index. Yeah, you can see thermal fluctuations, right? How far we can accommodate right within this electron density map. So, this is the values. So, you can see this is x y z coordinates, this is occupancy, and here this is the B factor. So, you have different numbers in a protein, and if you want to compare this B factor with the different proteins because it changes from protein to protein. So, in order to normalize that we can derive the normalized B factor using the formula B normalized is equal to B minus B mean right what is B mean? Average of this average of the all this ok this is the numbers. So, you can get the average. So, this is equal to B mean then we get the B sigma what is B sigma? This standard deviation you can see the deviation from all these numbers. So, we will get the B sigma. So, we get this formula B minus B minus B sigma right we get the normalized values if it is more than 1 we treat this as a flexible and if it is less than 1 we take this rigid we get depending upon this value of this B. If it is more than the mean right or less than the mean. So, you can see that it is flexible or rigid with more than the mean right it is more flexible right if less than the mean then it is rigid. So, using this formula you can see which residues are flexible and which residues are rigid. So, this is a physical quantity there are also several physical quantities for example, release of aeration, center of mass, moment of inertia all the information you can calculate from protein 3D structures right. So, one of the center of mass what is center of mass right this is the center of your distribution of a mass in space d s the property it is here right that the weighted position vectors related to the point sum is equal to 0. For example, you have 3 different uh, uh, objects here. So, you can see the center of mass right is located at position number C. So, how to calculate the center of mass? So, you can use CM here this is for the any uh, coordinates x coordinate or y coordinate z coordinate you can calculate. So, m i and x i where is m i? m i is the mass and x i is the coordinate normally with the total mass. Right, if you use this uh, formula you can calculate center of mass for the uh, uh, different coordinate system or you can see where is the center of mass for the whole protein. Why the how far this will be helpful? Because when you compare the different different uh, protein structures so small proteins or big proteins and all and the distribution of the residues right in, in, the, in a different shell. So, you can see in this case it is better to find the center of mass where it is located and based on that you can see how far uh, the each residues are located with respect to this center of mass. Then we can also derive a radius of gyration. What is radius of gyration? It is a distribution right of the components of an object around any axis. For example, if you take the moment of inertia right it is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation right to any point mass for example, say mass m. So, you can calculate the radius of gyration using this equation i this is the moment of inertia m is the mass how is the equation for the moment of inertia mass. i equal to m r square right. So, m is the mass and r square you can calculate from the center of mass right x my x is any coordinate from the center of mass. So, x minus e m the whole square now substitute these values in this in this equation here then you can get the r g there is sigma m i right divided by multiplied by x i into c m the whole square divided by this m this sigma m i then take the square root. So, you can calculate the radius of gyration this can also you can tell the information regard regarding the different uh, positions right for the atoms in any particular protein. When you discuss about the molecular dynamic simulations right how the atom positions vary uh, right that you can uh, determine using this term about the radius of gyration. Now, we discussed various aspects then we can also use the distance between the different residues or atoms to convert into the type of interactions. There are various interactions protein structures what are the various interactions in protein structures? 
hydrogen bonds, bonds electrostatic interactions, right, heterophobic interactions, Van der Waals interactions, right. So, really you can calculate the values from the 3D structures and, and also it is possible to see the contacts to identify what are the probable residues which can make this type of contacts. How many residues in a protein which have the potential to form any specific type of interactions. Instead of doing the complete calculations, you can identify the residues or residue pairs which are involved in any specific type of interactions. For example, in the case of disulfide. Here you take the distance, how to calculate the distance? Square root of x 2 minus x 1 the whole square plus y 2 minus y 1 the whole square plus z 2 minus x 1 the whole square. So, you can calculate the distance. Now, for the case of disulfide bond interactions, you can see the pair of cysteines, okay, these cysteines form the disulfide bonds, which atom in cysteine? Sulphur, right. So, you can see whether any sulphurs which are within the limit of 2.2 angstrom, they are considered as a disulfide bridges, they have the high tendency to form disulfide bonds. In this case, for example, if you have protein structure, right, how to identify the disulfide uh, bridges, whether any uh, disulfide bridges in a particular protein? We have the structures, first you search for cysteine and the cysteine we know the atom position for the sulphur atoms and you get the uh, distance, if the distance is less than 2.2 angstrom, then you see that these two cysteines they have high potential to form the disulfide bonds, right, this is disulfide interactions. Then you can see the ionic interactions, essentially what is ionic interaction? Coulombs. Coulombs law, it is the interaction with attractive interac interaction between charge. charge residues, one positive charge, one negative charge. What are the positive charge residues in a protein? Arginine, lysine, 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 lysine and histidine, these are positive charge residues. What are negative charge residues? So, this is negative charge residues, right. Then you can see any pairs which are within the limit of 6 angstrom. So, in literature different distance has been used, for example, sometimes they use 4 angstrom, but in this paper they try to use 6 angstrom because they do not want to lose any of these ion pairs. So, can we consider all atoms within the limit of 6 angstrom in the arginine and aspartic acid or glutamic acid? Only charge right? So, if we take the arginine, there is many several atoms. Also, if we take the aspartic acid, glutamic acid, you have several atoms, right? Main chain atoms, N C alpha C O and several side, side chain atoms. So, it also if you take a arginine or lysine, you can see the next group. So, they have the positive charge. Likewise, the aspartic acid or glutamic acid, right, you can see OE1 or OE2, right, they have a negative charge. You get the distance between these atoms and check whether the distance is less than 6 angstrom. Right, specifically, in the case of lysine, lysine arginine, it has long side chain. C alpha will be somewhere, and if you see this NH2 group, this will be very far. Right, because several CH2 groups, right. So, in this case, you see the distance between the positive atom and the negative charge atom, and the distance is less than 6 angstrom, this can be treated as right high potential to form ion pairs. The likewise, you can see the aromatic aromatic interactions, right. What are the aromatic rings in the protein structures? Tyrosine, Tyrosine tryptophan. Tryptophan. tryptophan, and phenylalanine. So, you can see the centroid of the phenyl ring. How to get the centroid of phenyl ring? Centrophomosin. Right, you can see the coordinates for all the carbon atoms in the ring, right. And then see the centroid, that means you can get the average values like kind of center of mass, you can see the centers for the different rings. Then check the distance from different rings, and if the distance is 4 to 4.57 angstrom, then you can see that these two residues which are involved in aromatic aromatic interactions. Right? In this case, if you take a protein, look at these rings and then get the centroid and get the and calculate the distance, and the distance is 4.527 angstrom, then you can say these residues are involved in aromatic aromatic interactions. Likewise, aromatic sulfur interactions, here sulfur atoms of cysteine and methionine, because two residues they have sulfur atoms. When we consider the disulfide bonds, we consider only cysteine. If in the aromatic sulfur interactions, we take both the residues cysteine and methionine and the aromatic rings. So, they take the distance of 5.3 angstrom. Likewise, in cation by interactions, what is cation by interactions? 
Aromatic What is cation? Positive charge. Positive charge. Right? Positive charge. Mainly ricin and arginine. Right? Then the pi, what is the pi system? Tyrosine. Tyrosine or tryptophan. So, you can see the interaction between the charge residues, positive charge residues and this uh, ring systems, right. So, there is the <coughs> distance of 10 angstrom, then you can treat this as cation pi interactions. In fact, the, in the original paper when uh, Gullivan Doughty they developed the concept of cation pi interactions, right, this 10 angstrom distance is so long. So, they imposed constraints with the interactions energy, they computed the electrostatic energy and Van der Waals energy, how to get the electrostatic energy? Q 1 Q 2 by R, so you can see the electrostatic energy, right? we will discuss one of the later classes about the details and the Van der Waals energy determined by the Leonard Jones potential, sixth potential and get the energy and the energy is also there some cut off for example, this less than minus 2 kilo per mole. Right. In these things, we are confident that these two residues are there forming the cut and pi interactions. If we take only the distance, right, we may be they may be very far. So, the energetically may not be favorable, but they have high tendency to form the cut and pi interactions. When you really see the cut and pi interactions, we need to consider the energy along with this distance criteria. So, you can get the heterophobic interactions. So, here you can see the C beta residues. Right, because C, C alpha is the main chain. So, we go to the side chain, so they, we need the C beta. So, this way they consider C beta residues of this particular this specific heterophobic residues and they consider cut off of phi angstrom and then see if the C alpha C beta residues which are within the limit of phi angstrom then you can see that these residues are involved in heterophobic interactions. Then go for the hydrogen bond interactions, right. What are the requirement for a hydrogen bond? Two electron two electron atoms, one, one with the hydrogen uh, with the attached to the hydrogen and the distance right that is the uh, about uh, the 2.5 to 3.2 ang uh, uh, angstrom. So, you can get a hydrogen main chain main chain interactions, main chain side chain interactions, side chain side chain interactions you can see all the hydrogen bond distance right if you have the cal calculate the distance right between these, these heavy atoms. So, we discussed about various types of interactions and various parameters properties which we can derive from protein 3D structures doing computationally all the parameters requires time right and again there is a the program called PDB param this is an online resource for the structural parameters of proteins right this is for they use the PDB structures this way they, they put PDB they derive various parameters this is why they use the term param. So, PDB param tells you and provides you the numerical values for several parameters which can be obtained from protein 3D structures. If you go to the PDB param, so there are four different types of values you can get right and four, four different aspects. You can get the binding sites that I will explain later when you discuss about the binding sites and you can see interactive interactions. What are interactive interactions we discussed? Aromatic interaction. Right, so you can see the short range interactions, medium range interactions, long range interactions and you can get this uh, contact order, you can get the long range order all these things you can get. The second physical properties you can see the tendency to form helix strand and so on and the physical chemical properties if you see there are various types of interaction radius of gyration, center of mass and the different types of interactions right electrostatic, cation pi and the hydrophobic interactions and various type of interaction. If you are interested in the interactive interactions for example, contact order or long range order or short range contacts or long range contacts you go with the interactive interactions. If you click on interact interactive interactions right then you will get yes, several options which parameter you want. So, to decide these parameters right we also require the PDB file. So, in this case in the previous slide you can have an option. So, to enter the PDB ID right here I gave the two LZM right either you can give the chain name or without chain name also you can give the PDB ID. If you give the chain ID it will calculate only for the particular chain. If the chain ID is not specified then you will calculate for all the chains. Either you can use the PDB ID or also you can upload the file right in the PDB format. So, if you have your own file for example, if you obtain any structures from MD simulations right the structures are not available in the protein data bank. So, if you want to calculate the parameters then you can upload the file 
So, then you can get the parameters. So, both options are avail uh, uh, available in PDB param. So, now we give the PDB ID and you want to get some parameters, right. So, for example, the interactive interactions, right, it tell you okay, this is the ID, PDB ID, you can check, and there are various options available, there are various properties. What is short range interaction? 2 or 3 residues, right, the 1 and 2 residues, and the medium range interactions, 3 or 4 residues, right, and long range interactions, so more, more than 4 residues, right. Uh, in these programs, so they have a little bit difference in this uh, limit that I will show in the slides. And you can calculate the contact order. How do you get the contact order? The number of contacts. Right, right. number of uh, distance separation normalized with the number of, number of residues and number of contacts. Long range order. Of of right, you can see consider only if the two residues are separated by minimum of 12 residues, right. Total contact distance is another parameter which is the combination of contact order and long range order. They combine these two and then develop this parameter long uh, total contact distance. Then also you can see number of contacts with an 8 angstrom either from C alpha atoms or C beta atoms and 14 angstrom with C alpha and C beta atoms. Why they give 8 angstrom and 14 angstrom? Because these distances are widely used in literature. 14 angstrom covers almost several regions in your protein and 8 angstrom is well used in several aspects. Then you can get the multiple contact index right for different types of proteins. If you want to get all the data just click on all otherwise if you are specifically interested on the long range order or contact order you can get the data. So, and if you submit you will get the output. So, this is the residue number 1 is contact with 2 and 3, 2 is contact with 3 and 4 right 3 with 5 uh, 4 and 5. So, here this is the residue number this is the chain information this is your central residue So, these are the contacting residue. So, for example, this one is contacted with these two residues they are located in positions 2 and 3 and this is the distance right. So, you can get all the uh, short range contacts. I guess go with the medium range contacts. Right, you can see the distance here they use the distance of 5 and 6 right for the case of uh, 2. So, they use 5 and 6 right they use the i plus uh, 3 and i plus 4. So, then you get the these are central residue this are contact residues and you have the distance distance we give the cutoff of 8 angstrom right. So, we get the distance of 8 angstrom you can uh, get the numbers. Likewise you can see short, short uh, long range contacts. For example, if you see these residues uh, 6 right with the tyrosine 161 and see the residue 7, how many long range contacts for residue 7? 3, 3, 3. Right, 3 right this 3. For example, if you want to get the long range order right what is Nij? 3. 3? because we need to have the cutoff of 12 residues. So, this is the i and here this j totally 3 contacts how many of them have the distance separation of 12 residues 2 right because this is 5 and this and this right this case energy equal to 2 right you can get these values right if you see the long range order you can see the numbers. So, now we go with the contact order. So, for this case we have the number 9.102. If you do the calculations for some all alpha proteins and some all beta proteins you can see the difference right how far the contact order right varies in based on different structure class of proteins. Then long range order we can get for all the residues. So, here the total value is equal to 0.744 right and for all the each residues you can calculate. So, for example, take residue number 1 long range order are equal to 0 0.006 because we have one contact. So, you can see it is one contact in this case two contacts right. So, this is this I 7 this will be 0 0.012 number of residues equal to 164. So, if you divide by this 2 by 164 you will get this number right you can then this is fine. The multiple contact index you can also you can calculate here the value is 0 0.018 compared with the contact order long range order and multiple contact index you can see the number is in which order decreasing order why is decreasing order because we impose more constraints. First one no constraint the contact order they contact take all contacts and they give weightage to the distance separation and long range order what is the constraint we give 
greater than 12. Greater than 12. So, in this case, we reduce several contacts and you go with the multiple contact index, we again reduce because we see the, con uh, the residues which have at least 4 contacts, this way number is less. But if you have a set of proteins, then you can compare. Okay, on the second one, that if you want to get different types of interactions or the center of mass or radius of gyration. In this case, you select the physical chemical properties and if you submit, right, it will show you all the properties. There is various properties you can calculate, center of mass, radius of gyration, all types of interactions, disulfates, ionic interactions and several interactions. But several uh, case I did not uh, explain the details, but if you go to the PDB param, there is a file, right, uh, the tutorial file as well as you can see the compute file. There if you click on this files, you can get all the details, what is the criteria used for different interactions, right, as well as the formula and the, all the details you can get. So, here now if you have several physical, physical properties, if you get to know all these things, you have put all and if you submit, I show you one or two examples, right, this center of mass, okay, this is molecular weight is 21 kilo daltons and this is center of mass for all the three coordinates, x, y, z. Radius of gyration, okay, this is radius of gyration on the three different axes and surrounding hydrophobicity, right, what is surrounding hydrophobicity? It is the average, 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 the total value, hydrophobic values of all the residues which are occurring within the limit of weight angstrom. See if you see some residues, you know the contacts, right. So, you can calculate the values, then this case for all the residues, you have the surrounding hydrophobicity. For example, if you take some of the residues which are high, say 15 or 17 and some residues which are very really less, say 9 and 10 and so on. Even some polar residues which are highly hydrophobic, if they are surrounded with the hydrophobic environment, hydrophobic residues. Non-polar residues also if you are in the midst of the polar residues, they have less, but you take the average and then you can see the tendency of these residues, right, specifically between the polar and non-polar residues. So, now if you have two proteins, so we discussed about the various parameters then we can also see how far the two structures they can be superimposed and how far they are similar to each other. Here is your two proteins, one is the lactalbumin and lysozyme, they are from different families. So, two different proteins, this is 123 residues and 129 residues. Sequence identity is less, but if you compare these residues, look into these residues, you can see some sort of similarity in structures. Say this helices here, we can see some similar type of helices and the stands here, similar type of stands here. So, how far they are different structures? In this case, put one structure and put the one the other on the top and measure the distance between the different locations, right? This will give you the root mean square deviation. This will tell you how far these two uh, proteins can be aligned in the structures. There are various methods to align the structures, for example, distance based methods and vector based methods. I will explain briefly about one method called the DALI, right, distance matrix alignment uh, developed by the Hohmann Sander, right. So, it is mainly based on the contact maps. So, we discussed about the contact maps, it is a representation of the 3D structure information in 2D, uh, 2D form. So, we get these contact maps and we compare how far the contact maps are similar. How to do this? First, they set the subset of the residues, they, they have the hexapeptides cut into different pieces and then see how these hexapeptides match. So, for example, there are some helices in the N terminal in the first protein and the C terminal second protein, if they have same contact map or similar contact map, then they can be aligned together in 3D structures. They use the search using a Monte Carlo algorithm, right, using the greedy algorithm, it will find most probable matches and then combine together and put it together in the 3D structures. How they do? So, for example, this A and A, A, A dash, if one is in A and the second is A dash, the same place and directly you can align. Something is, the second is B and the B dash is very far, then you see the contact map and this can be aligned together, put it together. A second option is an overlapping pair, A B with B, B dash and C with the C dash. And the third one, you can combine these two. Right, A is directly mapping that exact match and here B with the B dash and C with the C dash. So, when we collapse and then make close similar to each other B with the B, B dash and C with the C dash. So, now they calculate the score, they have a score just phi, this is the distance of protein A and protein B between any two residues. Using this formula, right, they can calculate the distance between I and J in the proteins A and B and they get the based on the scale, score, they can match the residues, they can map the residues. Once they map the residues, then they align together right, and see the RMSD 
and see the best possible match and finally, they put together the two structures. So, this is the server for the Delhi. So, it asks for the proteins one is this first protein one protein two. So, then take this protein and finally, it asks for the superimposition get the similar structures and do the structure based sequence alignment. In this case they do not align the sequence wise they get the stru similar structures they align together. So, based on the structures they align together and using this information they will con uh, construct this superimposition. If you see the red the magenta one and the green one right the red ones align very properly right the armistice is uh, around 1.4 angstrom right between these two uh, protein structures. So, recently they developed the server you can see the new server in this case they already calculated the similar structures for several uh, cases and they developed a database for the similar structures right in this case you do not have to calculate again. So, if you see these two proteins which are available in the database then you can easily extract these two residue the proteins which are close to each other and so on. So, overall if you see the structure based parameters what are the various parameters we discussed? Yes, Starting from the beginning, we start from the contact maps, servant accessibility, Red. buriedness, buriedness transfer, of free energy. transfer free energy, contact reduction order. reduction accessibility, Access. contact order, long, long range, range order, multiple contact, multiple index. contact index, surrounding, hydro surrounding hydrophobicity, flexibility parameters. Flexibility param we discussed plenty of parameters, right? Then after that, different types of interactions. What are the possibility of the two specific residues which can form? electrostatic ion pairs or electrostatic interactions or disulfide bonds cut and interactions and so on. So, then discuss about the program called PDB param it takes the PDB ID and calculates more than 50 parameters right this can be useful for any project and you can take different types of proteins and calculate the parameters and see how the parameters vary in different classes with different functions and see how why these parameters are attributed for different functions. Then we discussed about the alignment how we can align these different uh, structures. In the following classes we will discuss about the structure prediction whether we are able to predict the 3D structures from the amino acid sequence or the applications of these parameters what we derived in these two three classes right to understand protein folding rates or protein stability or protein interactions some sort of applications point of view we will discuss in the later, later classes. Then we will explain about the development of algorithms and what are the factors we need to consider when you develop your own algorithm for example, for if you want to do any projects and so on that will uh, end up with that type of analysis. Thank you very much.